Hello, I'm Neil Benezra, director of the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art. 2010 marks SF MoMA's 75th anniversary. As we reflect on our history, we are simultaneously looking forward and beginning to plan for a major transformation, the next phase in SF MoMA's evolution. Earlier this year, SF MoMA announced an historic partnership with the Fisher family, making the museum the future home of their extraordinary collection of modern contemporary art. The first public showing of this collection, one of the world's greatest private collections of work made after 1950, is now on view on the fourth and fifth floors. Since SF MoMA moved to this building from the Civic Center in 1995, our collections, programs, and audiences have grown exponentially. To accommodate this growth and to present the Fisher Collection, the museum will be expanding. In fact, we plan to triple the size of our public and gallery spaces. Several months ago, SF MoMA's Architect Selection Committee began the process of choosing an architect. We looked at the leading firms worldwide known for innovative design, sustainable development, and a proven ability to meet the needs of an art museum in an urban setting. In May, SF MoMA announced four finalists, Adjay Associates, Diller Scafidio and Renfro, Foster and Partners, and Snohetta. We thought you'd enjoy the opportunity to get acquainted with these exceptional architects and learn more about their approaches to the project. In this short film, the four finalists talk about why they are interested in collaborating with SF MoMA, they tell us about their creative processes and give us their impressions of San Francisco. In designing a museum, probably one of the first questions that one has to ask oneself is, what is a museum? They're becoming social places, much like libraries are today. Everyone thought that libraries were going to disappear because of digital age, but in fact, they're more used today than they have been because they've become socially collaborative locations for coexisting and cohabitating with other people with cultural interests. The same is true with museums. So an invisible issue here is why do we need museums and what is a museum in the context of today and tomorrow? And that will drive the development of the architecture. The act of, of looking is very much part of the museum experience. When one goes to a museum, uh, one could lose oneself in a single painting or a single piece of art for an hour um, and then wake up and then move to another piece. Uh, so we, we like to think of um, the museum experience as antithetical to the model of efficiency. It's not about getting from point A to point B efficiently. It's not about getting from the tour bus to the gift shop and through the galleries. It's really about spending the time um, and engaging uh, in the work and, uh, and engaging in all the other activities that are part of museum experience today. Architecture as a statement and galleries as a setting, make no mistake, the works of art in this collection, together with those works in the permanent collection, they're the key players. So the, the architecture should, in a way, recede to make that the great experience, to enhance that. It should not compete. And I think that there's something very interesting about this time now and the ability to make an institution which is no longer like a palace that's sort of somewhere where maybe the community has to sort of be invited to be edified in it, to somehow to be educated in it, but somehow the idea of making an institution which dissolves into the community, which is much more porous with the community and actually a kind of has an incredible generosity and freedom with the community. And I think that San Francisco has this incredible opportunity to do that because of what it is, where it's come to, and the fact that this institution wants to build a new, a new a sort of, like, well, triple in size, really, and become something that um, will have an extraordinary um, collection at its heart, the Fisher Collection. The museum is, is about culture, it's about accessibility, and in this case, uniquely, it's about an extraordinary collection. I mean, an unbelievable collection. It's a fusion, really, of a very exciting building type with this incredible collection and the context of a great city. So that's really remarkable in, in any terms. The, the response, the architectural response to the expansion to accommodate uh, the growth of SF MoMA 
um, is one that can either take a position of articulating the Fisher Collection as something separate from, with its own identity, or something that actually is conjoined and, uh, and blended together. Um, our proposition is uh, a new architectural statement, a very strong architectural statement, but at the same time, um, uh, the uh, engagement of new galleries uh, to SF MoMA's current uh, holdings of galleries that will enable it to blend these two collections together in new ways. And one has to, uh, in a way, imagine what the coexistence will be between those galleries. We feel that the success of the whole is greater than the sum of its parts, so that both the Fisher Collection and the SF MoMA galleries should feel complementary and strengthen each other. The ability to have its uh, existing condition the fissure, which is a specific context, which is a specific space, so it's with its own specific atmosphere. One atmosphere being the existing building, the second atmosphere, the atmosphere of the fissure, and the third atmosphere, the atmosphere of the expansion, with their very different natures, allowing the visitor to have this very kind of beautiful moment of kind of understanding thresholds and new encounters and new moments, but also allowing people to be able to short circuit and choose their moments within this building. So it's to kind of move away from um, homogenizing but to actually make it specific qualities, actually that being a strength. We were talking very much about the past as prologue in the creation of a new expansion for the SF MoMA that goes all the way back 75 years to a time when the SF MoMA existed in a Beaux-Arts structure where there was a theater and other institutions and their life was all about occupying territory. If they didn't occupy territory in the veterans building in a very clear and distinct way, they would lose their identity. That led to the next stage of the museum's development to create a clear external statement about its presence. The choice of South of Market did that, although in a controversial way. It meant that Mr. Bota, the architect, had to make a clear and identifiable anchor, a monumental anchor that nobody could ignore. Now that that stage is complete, the museum must open up itself to its community. Rather than being an introverted building that looks in on itself and is more or less dedicated to the confinement of, of the art within, it has to open its vistas, open its venue to the community. I think the Mario Botta building is a very, very clear, symmetrical statement related to um, uh, Third Street. We could improve the performance of the institution in its dramatically enlarged form, at the same time building on and respecting the, uh, the Botta entity. The opportunity of the expansion is to actually change the language, is to change the terms of involvement with the city and the public, and uh, to uh, break down uh, that hard brick, break down uh, that, that wall, and, um, and allow a much more fluid and uh, an informal exchange between the public um, and, and the artwork. What Mario Boto did was an extraordinary thing, which was to um, use light as a way of organizing and centralizing and, and, and coordinating a sort of very interesting narrative about how you use um, a, a museum, how the visitor comes in, how they kind of how they see the kind of body of the, the building and how they kind of rise as it were to the top of the chamber. Is there a moment where you can somehow establish a new center but somehow make um, the sort of what I'm calling the past, the Bota project um, and its, its, its power be complemented by a new phenomena to realize another way of ascending into the light. In a way, I think the Bota thing is about ascending into the light. And in a way, what is, and he did that then. So what is ascending into the light now? San Francisco is a very livable city and at the same time cosmopolitan. It's, it's interesting to be in this part of the city, uh, south of Market and its redevelopment and how it's all coming together and, and mutating and changing. Um, and this project has a really a large role to play in that transformation. Another thing that's exciting about San Francisco is that it's constantly changing and transforming and filled with a huge diversity of people. So not only is there a diversity of terrain, there's a diversity of, of different types of qualities of, of, of a cosmopolitan atmosphere. And diversity and terrain, topography, are, are wonderful features of San Francisco.
there's something about San Francisco um, and this extraordinary light which has been profound to me and also this incredible geography. I mean, it's a city which has been built differently to other American cities, this idea of this very horizontal um, mat which is rolled over this incredible terrain but that has allows these incredible vistas to occur. I mean, this, it's unforgettable. The city is just an incredible place to live. Wonderfully, it is the second densest city in America, and there's a very strong connection between density, urbanity, the great quality of life that this city offers, and sustainability. And the quest is to do a museum which is truly sustainable, which harvests energy, which consumes less energy, and which is socially uh, responsible. So there's a great synergy between this city and its inherent story of sustainability. It's a very special place. There's no there like this there. For the past 75 years, SF MoMA has steadily grown both the size and the quality of our collections and programs. Our upcoming expansion offers the museum an unprecedented opportunity to reinforce our role as a creative catalyst for San Francisco and a global force for contemporary art on the West Coast. We look forward to collaborating with one of these stellar architectural firms to develop an expanded museum that will offer great art experiences and an inspired gathering place for visitors from around the neighborhood and around the world. This September, we'll be selecting the architect to design the project. Stay tuned for that announcement and other expansion news on our website, sfmoma.org.